so we were looking at the governing equations and uh, we realized that there is no point in really looking for an exact solution and then uh, we figured out that uh, you know we would actually look start looking at a mean quantity like mean pressure mean velocity and so on but then we also found that the mean velo the mean quantities actually don't satisfy the governing equations that's where we ended up okay so that was the point and therefore the fact that we realized was that we need to go to another framework we can't just proceed the way we have been doing it for laminar flow okay we can do that but before we do that i need you to um, introduce you to this term called uh, turbulent stress and to do that we need to look at the equation where we stopped last time we will see what is turbulent stress in that equation and then we will um, see how to attack turbulent flow uh, problems is that clear okay so can you all look at the equation that we left last time for the mean um, flow in uh, let's say x direction So we use just u for the x component of velocity, right? Is this right? This is what we had. Yeah, and we realized that those terms that I have written on the right hand side, which actually contained uh, the primed variables. So, the primed variables are the fluctuating parts of the velocity field, okay, u prime, v prime, w prime are respectively the fluctuating uh, velocities in x, y, and z direction, and they gave rise to certain quantities, right. Those quantities are extra terms that have come up in the mean flow governing equation. And we said that is actually a complication. And uh, therefore, we cannot really solve for the mean quantity. We need to know what these fluctuations are. So, there is a nicer way to write these fluctuations and that is what we are going to do first. Let us say we want to, so we are looking at incompressible fluid, okay. We are going to look at rho being constant. So, rho is a constant. Let us see what is del by del x of u prime u prime plus u prime v prime plus u prime w prime. Sorry, we do not want that. Plus del by del y of u prime v prime plus del by del z of u prime w prime is okay i'm just trying to look at a quantity okay which i have looked at as products of the fluctuating components hmm? and i'm taking some derivatives i'll sh i want to connect that expression to the first expression that i have written so this is um, and i'm going to simply apply the product rule so that will give me u prime do u prime by do x plus again u prime do u prime by do x plus u prime dou v prime by dou y plus v prime dou u prime by dou y plus u prime dou w prime by dou z plus w prime dou u prime by dou z. Just expanded the products and if you look at uh, terms this and that and that. Okay, that is nothing but 
u prime into dou u prime by dou x plus dou v prime by dou y plus dou w prime by dou z plus <coughs> the other quantity that we have is u prime dou u prime by dou x plus v prime dou u prime by dou y plus w prime dou u prime by dou z. Oh, I have written all these things wrong. Is this correct now? Hmm? So, that is what we must have derived the last class. Okay, so, the why I want to do this is because uh, what is this? That is 0 and how do we know that is 0? We are talking about the fluctuating components, but we know that the mean quantities and fluctuating quantities separately satisfy the continuity equation. We proved it in the last class. Okay? So, therefore, this quantity is 0 and therefore, what I have on the left hand side is same as what I have on the right hand side. But if you look at these quantities on the right hand side, this is what I actually have inside the integral in all these three terms. Is that right? Or in other words, what my intention is to write down this quantity in the square bracket with this, this particular one, this particular quantity I want to substitute and use there. That is the idea. Should I say anything? Should I explain again? Yes, no? So, that is a no? Okay. So, so then I am going to substitute the quantity that I have circled. Dou u bar by dou t plus u bar dot grand u equal to minus dou p by dou x plus mu the Laplacian okay the Laplacian of u I am going to write it in terms of components write different components del square u by del x square plus mu del square u by del y square plus mu del square u by del z square minus okay, the quantity that is inside the integral del by del x of rho u prime square bar minus del by del y of rho u prime v prime bar minus del by del z of rho u prime w prime bar. What have I done? So, look at the quantities that are inside the square bracket. Okay. So, the, the quantities that are inside the square bracket, I am replacing it with this general expression that I have circled. Okay. So, this is that is because we found that the quantities are same, the one which I have circled and the quantity that is inside the square bracket. Okay. But each of those quantities are integrated from 0 to t and divided by t. So, by definition they are all average quantities. So, I have put basically average of each of them. So, the first is del by del x of u prime square. So, that is just del by del x of rho u prime square bar. Okay. It is basically the mean quantity. So, not mean quantity, it is the mean of the fluctuations or mean of the square of the fluctuations. So, of course, you know that that is not 0. We talked about it last time. So, that is why you get all these non-zero quantities on the right hand side. Okay. <clears throat> is equal to, I am going to combine now let us say that and that is minus dou p bar by dou x plus del by del x of mu dou u by dou x minus rho u prime square averaged. I am going to combine 
that and that to get plus del by del y of mu dou u by dou y minus rho q prime v prime averaged. I am going to combine that and that to get plus del by del z of mu dou u by dou z minus rho u prime w prime averaged. That is okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, I was just going to ask you what is that quantity mu dou u by dou x? That is tau, right? So, so that is basically we defined a constitutive relation. So, originally we had the tau itself in the governing equation. Then we base, uh, we used um, Newton's law of viscosity and replaced that tau with mu dou u by dou y or mu dou u by dou x, whichever. Okay, so that's how these terms that you have gotten. Okay, so those are stresses that's really um, associated with the viscous uh, mechanism, right? The viscous, those are the viscous stresses. Okay, now what we are saying is that effectively. If you look at the equation for the mean flow, it is not viscous stresses alone, but there is something else also that is appearing along with those stresses. Okay, right, because each of them contain, so the first stress actually contains something extra here. The second one also contains something extra. Third one also contains something extra. So that extra stress is known as turbulent stress. Okay, so it is the stress that is coming because the flow field itself is fluctuating. So, that is what gives rise to what you call as the turbulent stress. Okay, so, every place where you actually had the stress, you could say that okay, there are two stresses, one is coming from viscosity, another is coming from the fact that the fluid uh, field is fluctuating. Is that clear? Okay. So, remember now, we origin when you derived the Cauchy's equation, right? You actually had the stress, you did not know what to do then. So, you said, okay, we will make use of Newton's law of viscosity, and therefore you converted that stress into velocity and proceeded. So, you get everything in terms of velocity, and therefore you were able to solve the equations. Now, you have actually ended up with a similar situation where there are quantities which are these primed variables which you do not know okay and therefore what we need is something like newton's law of viscosity okay in other words we need an expression for the turbulent stress okay so that's the way people have been thinking about these terms and people try to derive various terms none of them are as good as what newton's law does okay so we still do not know what is the best way to do it there are various approaches so, for example, when you look at um, people talking about turbulent flow and how they solve it, they will also tell what kind of a turbulent model that they have used. Okay. So, that is what generally or really the field of turbulence modeling. So, it is really an unsolved problem. We do not know what is the best equation that we want to do. Okay. We want to replace this fluctuating quantities with some mean values but we really do not know what is the best thing to do. But therefore, you there are certain models that you would use when you really want to solve a flow problem. Hmm? So, if you think uh, uh, you know you, you can contribute maybe this is one of the area that you should think about you know what is the best way to replace the um, those uh, fluctuating quantities or is this split step of mean versus fluctuation itself is the right way to do it. Okay. Anyway, so that's uh, uh, that's what I wanted to say about turbulent stresses. Now, um, realizing that um, uh, we can't take this route, okay, we are basically going to use a bit of non-dimensional analysis, some insights from the experiments, and then try to come up with uh, you know expressions and quantities that we can use in our usual uh, design routine. Okay.